Good morning. And welcome to the Hamilton Wenham Regional High School Class of 2023 graduation ceremony. At this time, I would like to invite the faculty to please join us. And now, please join me in wel welcoming the Hamilton Wenham graduating class of 2023. Once again, welcome to the class of 2023 graduation ceremony.
Thank you, parents, guardians, family, friends, teachers, and administrators for being here for such an important milestone. You are all here because you played a significant role in guiding these students to where they are today. My name is Jeff Walsh. Over the past four years, I have had the privilege of getting to know the graduating class, both as a teacher and their class advisor. Being a class advisor is an honor. It has been an amazing experience to work with these students as they navigate the regional, bring their class together, and finally celebrate all of their accomplishments as they conclude their high school careers. Unfortunately, being a class advisor does have its drawbacks. For me, it's standing in front of everyone giving a speech. <laughs> I've been thinking about how much I dislike public speaking now for about a month. But then, Mr. Menegoni made me feel much better when he told me, just remember, nobody cares about what you have to say. <laughs> His comforting words made me realize that I was in a win-win situation. I either end up with a great speech, or I make Chloe's chat GPT speech look that much better. Either way, everyone still graduates. I want to take this moment to address the class as they depart the regional and continue on to their next adventure. As you travel down the path of life, you'll be faced with many challenges. It's important to remember that it's not the challenges that find you, but rather how you overcome them. It's how you work with the obstacles, opportunities, and roadblocks of life life that helps shape who you become. This is a class that's not afraid of roadblocks. This is a class that knows the importance of support, drive, curiosity, loyalty, respectfulness, and integrity, and how to use these characteristics to learn and better themselves and those around them. To commence the school year, Eliza Bassam addressed the faculty with an amazing speech. She said, Everyone in this room has the ability to change a student's learning path, push them to better themselves, and be, them, be there for them when they need it most. What you may not have realized is what kind of impact the students of the class of 2023 have on teachers, parents, and each other. Most people don't think about the learning opportunities and life lessons that teachers get to experience every day from these students. Throughout the four years of working with the class of 2023, I've been reminded of so many important life lessons. One of these life lessons came from Ben and Jackson. When I first met these two, I was as healthy as could be. Now, four years, five classes, and countless, countless hours later, These two have helped me reach a new high score at the doctor's office, <laughs> often referred to as high blood pressure. <laughs> but outside of tra regular tra regularly trying to give me a heart attack, these two demonstrated the importance of selflessness and willingness to do just about anything for just about anyone at the drop of a hat. Robert Baum showed me that when given the proper equipment and opportunity, people can achieve just about anything. If I told Rob to build a rocket and gave him the tools to do so, he would. Olivia, Olivia Suman taught me that being overly organized can actually be fun. And to be honest, I'm not sure what I'm going to do without her, having her around to run my life next year. I can only imagine how many perfectly organized Excel docs are in a Google Drive. Gloria Jung demonstrated how impactful the element of surprise could be as she quietly walked on the stage of the talent show and blew everyone away with her unbelievably powerful voice as she sang Rise Up by Andre Day. Russell Caswell embraced the power of communication, laughter, and kindness as he walked through the hallways and put a smile on everyone's face. 
Maya Beach. Maya Beach is just awesome. <laughs> From being an active, diligent member of most clubs offered at the school, to pursuing and excelling at all of her life passions. She even created an amazing mural in the shop, which I've been hoping for for years. All while being a friendly, optimistic person to all. I swear, there's nothing that Maya can't do. True Genuado, True Genuado made coding look easy as he worked with the robotics team to create a robot that was capable of running fully autonomously. All of these students retaught me one of the most important le lessons. Life is what you make of it, so make it count. When I spoke to the class of 2019, four years ago, I focused on taking a risk, a chance for an opportunity, sticking up for something in the face of adversity and opposition. Today, I stand in front of you, knowing you, knowing that you will take risks. Stand up for what you believe in, be the person you want to be, and that you will create a path that you're proud to walk down. Life is about living, so live in the moment, live for the moment, be someone you want to be, and do something that makes you and those around you happy. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2023. I'd like to now welcome up Principal Menagoni. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to graduation. And you're welcome for the built-in air conditioning today. My name is Brian Menagoni, and I'm the principal of Hamilton Wenham Regional High School. We are proud to celebrate the members of the class of 2023 today and all they have accomplished over the past four years. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce our salutatorian, Maya Beach. In Chinese culture, food has always served as our love language. I love you, or what I need, is rarely stated, and instead substituted for warm meals, cut fruit, or a cup of tea. The greatest blessing on New Year's is a wish of good health. Xin Ji Jian Kang. This is a practice that comes from a past of struggle. To sustain one another, to ensure the health of your family despite adversity, is seen as the greatest act of compassion. As young as four, I began helping with Dumbly Assembly, rolling out the dough in, into haphazard circles to be filled and carefully pinched into shape. By six, my grandmother and mother taught me how to plant seedlings and carefully harvest cherry tomatoes, green beans, and prickly cucumbers. By 10, my grandmother taught me how to use a knife so that I could help her finally cut up ginger. Later, she showed me how to peel and slice entire melons. My best memories growing up were spent with food. Alone, handed cut fruit while studying diligently for an AP chemistry test, or hot homemade dumplings amidst cutting paper for the enormous undertaking of a humanities project. It reminded me to take a break. Food tastes even better with others. The potlucks I've shared with family in both the United States and China. Ice cream soup after beach excursions. Danny, wherever you are in this crowd, the flavor of your grandmother's Haitian cake at your birthday still makes my mouth water. Mariana, <laughs> your mother's wide array of cookies in the winter that you shared with us all. Olivia, your exquisite pastries and cakes year after year in our 13 years of friendship. Maven Georgia, the candy you consistently toss at me during lunch. And Gloria, thank you for the delicious Korean food you share from home. Unsurprisingly, this practice has infiltrated every community space I am in. In freshman year, I walked into school with an entire pumpkin pie to share with fellow members of the band before Thanksgiving. I felt a little foolish being asked first thing in the morning by Mr. Tracy, what have you got there? But the celebration was worth it, splitting a pie during power block with my friends and passerbys in the hallway. Among students I've worked alongside, I've become known for designing silly cakes for end-of-the-year celebrations for soccer, robotics, and math team. 
And no matter what, I'm always willing to bake up an extra loaf of banana bread for a neighbor. Donuts are another thing. Whether from Dunkin' or Cane's, they taste so much sweeter when split in two. Shared and split among peers during work, band, celebration, competitions, or practices, they make my day go round. Donut Fridays during robotics season propelled us to have a successful competition and definitely helped with our morale. Maybe this speech is a reflection of a hungry writer, but food models sustenance in my life. I want to encourage you to take action, big and small, to care for those around you, to seek out change, whether it be splitting a donut in half, working to better yourself, or volunteering to help your community. In today's current age, sustaining one another is one of the most important and impactful things you can do. So, as we move forward as a class to move our tassels across our caps from right to left within the upcoming hour, look after those around you. You have the opportunity to create an improved world, meet a new cast of wonderful individuals, and most importantly, find yourself at the end of it all. Thank you to the class of 2023 and those that, all of those that have helped along the way. Thank you, Maya. And now I'm very pleased to present our valedictorian, Chloe Gern. Good morning, parents, family, friends, teachers, and most importantly, the class of 2023. My name is Chloe Gern, and it's my honor to be speaking with all of you on this lovely day. Most people who know me would agree that I'm a very competitive person. From elementary school Foursquare to middle school Challenge to senior assassin, I've always strived to be the best, to be the winner. That competitive spirit might be ingrained in me because I have a twin brother. When people first find out I have a twin, their initial reaction is telling me how lucky I am to have a built-in best friend. While that might be true, we have actually been competing since birth and even before then. My mom had to have an emergency C-section because I was hogging all of the nutrients, <laughs> leaving none for my brother Will and almost starving him. <laughs> Despite that rough start and the occasional disagreement, since then I'm very close with my only twin brother. All of our lives, we've been told that winning isn't everything. But more and more, it feels like winning is everything. I've realized that we all need to redefine what winning truly means to each of us in order to create a life that we are proud of. We've all experienced the beauty of winning in some form. Personally, I've seen it through sports as a member of the soccer and tennis teams. I will never forget the feeling of winning that soccer state championship as a team, seeing that final shot go in during overtime, the field getting swarmed with celebrating teammates, lifting the trophy up towards the crowd, and feeling the support of the entire school. And throughout the past four years, members of the class of 2023 have each experienced the thrill of victory in their own unique ways. Take Spirit Week, five days when students put on the battle armor of togas and tutus and fight to defend their class's honor. Fierce rivalries erupt, fueled by illegal headshots and dodgeball and shameless cheating and hungry, hungry hippos. That's all child's play compared to the powder puff game between the junior and senior girls, an annual event infamous for starting fights and testing even the strongest of friendships. And this year's powder puff game was no different. Weeks of close practices, spying and trash talk led up to the game, tensions mounting as we took the field. In some ways, it felt more momentous, more exhilarating, more world-shaking than playing in a state championship. And you can all guess what ensued. Taunting, flags thrown on the ground, and even tears. But it seems that this compulsion to win extends beyond traditional competitions like sports and spirit week. The concept of winning has spilled over into every aspect of life. Social life, relationships, college acceptances, the list goes on, and there's always a cost to winning. 
It's wind sprints up and down the field during soccer practice. It's hours of lost sleep spent studying to memorize gas laws for a chemistry test. While hard work and discipline are important, so is finding the right balance. Given the time that it takes, is winning worth the price? Maybe not always. Each of us needs our own definition of winning. That starts with determining what we care about, what is worth the sacrifice of our time and energy. We need to reflect on what matters to us, what makes us feel good, like we've won. For me, it's in the simple moments. I think what I will remember more than individual accomplishments or an A on a test is laughing with my family, singing along to my favorite song with friends, or doing something kind for someone else. These things create a deeper happiness, a real feeling of winning. And over the next few years, we will begin to shape our adult lives. When formulating the direction of your life, remember how you define winning. Don't chase something because your parents or the world tell you to. Your own happiness and satisfaction are crucial to winning your own life. In these past four years of high school, I've learned some undeniable truths. The cafeteria scones are never coming back. It's impossible to sneak by Miss Miller if you're late. And the seniors are supposed to win the powder puff game. Yes, we won on a controversial play, and I will go to my grave swearing Ella did not drop that ball. But let's face it, historically, powder puff can be a little rigged. And while during that game, I lost part of my front tooth, I gained a greater understanding about winning. <laughs> Looking back, it wouldn't have even mattered if we had lost, because just being there was so fun. And days chanting, the satisfaction of scoring a touchdown as a team, rushing the field after the game. We won because we came together and shared that special, unique experience. And on this last day that we'll all be together, I want to remind us that we have won as a class. We have shared this special experience of high school and made it through together. Our experience as a class is completely unique to us and these memories will connect us through whatever comes our way. And while we'll all be heading in different directions over the next few years, we can't forget our teammates who are by our side throughout this journey. Thank you and congratulations to the class of 2023. Thank you, Chloe. The class of 2023 definitely feeds off of your drive, leadership, and what I will call energy. Thank you. As many of you are aware, someone special to me and who I love very much is a member of today's graduating class. So when I thought about speaking today, I had one goal in mind, not to start bawling my eyes out in front of everyone and become some kind of internet meme that's shared for years to come. <laughs> so far, I think I've held it together okay, but we still have a little ways to go. One benefit of having a child in the class of 2023 is that I have been blessed with the opportunity to know some of you since you were in kindergarten. I could tell a long time ago that this was a nice group of kids. And as you move through elementary school and into middle school, you seem to take on and grow the identity of being a close, compassionate, and caring class. Kevin Sano, a longtime teacher in Hamilton Wenham, told me when you were in sixth grade what a special group you were. Believe it or not, we always look forward to your arrival to the high school and what you could bring to our school community. When you did come to us as ninth graders, you generally flew under the radar, as freshmen typically do. Well, most of you did anyways. Yeah. I, I wasn't thinking of you, Jackson, but I don't know. Okay. Then your lives, along with everyone else's, changed in March of 2020. <clears throat> when the pandemic shut the world down, 
the opportunities for you to find your identity as a class were halted, and it wasn't made any easier as we returned to school in the fall of 2020 and lived through the bizarre experience of hybrid learning. Classes were different, and sports were weird, and we ate at desks in rows in the cafeteria. There certainly weren't opportunities to build community in the normal ways. So how then did we get to this moment when I can say that you are undoubtedly my favorite class of all time? When I can say, <clears throat> when I can say that you are a group that accepts everyone for who they are, <clears throat> who tries to include everyone, and who actively looks for ways to give back to your community, both within and outside of Hamilton Wenham. It all comes back to your character, who you have always been. <clears throat> kind, compassionate, together, and tough. That is the class of 2023 to me. The adversity of the past few years revealed the uniqueness of this class. The pandemic did not change who you are. Rather, it drew out the best parts of each and every one of you. Although your transition to high school was interrupted, you relied on this unwavering, positive character to become state champions, nationally recognized scholars, talented artists and performers, and most importantly, young adults who have infinite possibility within reach. Certainly, the journey has not been perfect. As adults, we may not have always functioned as the role models we should have for you. The class of 2023 itself has experienced difficulty, hit bumps in the road, and been challenged. But the togetherness of this group and the strength of your character have always brought us to a better place. You really have been the bedrock for our entire community in your time here as generals. But I'm not sure that my words fully illustrate the kindness, resilience, and toughness of this group. I may not be able to articulate how much you care for each other, and in no way am I a representation of the incredible talent that is present across the entire class of 2023. So rather than listen to any more of what I have to say, Aeneas, Dylan, and Russell have something to share with you. Something on my mind and I don't want to squander the moment Trying to come up with a better way to say what I want to say People were mean to you But I always thought you were cool Clicking down the concrete hallways In your spice heels back in high school It's better to cough a few years and come out on the other side With our hearts still beating, having stared down demons Come back breathing People were mean to you But I always thought you were cool Clicking down the concrete hallways In your spice seals Back in high school deserve better than you got someone's gotta say it sometimes cause it's true people should have told you you were awesome instead of taking advantage of you and i hope you love your life now like i love mine and i hope the painful memories only flex the power over you a little at a time. We all die. 
found a hope of better days coming And when we did we were right I hope the people who did you wrong Had trouble sleeping at night Down the country hallways, in the stripes fields, back in high school, people were mean to you, but I always thought you were cool, looking down the country hallways, in the stripes fields, back in high school, yeah! Thank you, Aeneas, Dylan, and Russell. Uh, your performance was nothing short of amazing and probably was a bit of a surprise. I want to acknowledge the time, work, and courage it took to bring this gift to your classmates and community. Thank you again. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to you our superintendent, Eric Tracy. There is nothing I can do to top that. Wow, awesome job. Last night I was playing a game of cribbage with my middle daughter, and she said, hey, Dad, can I read your speech for tomorrow? I'm like, oh, it's nothing. It's really kind of quick. I just want to get out of the way and make sure the kids get their diplomas. So she read it, and she looked up, and she said, uh-uh. I was like, what? She said, yeah, that's not going to work. you got to get rid of that thing. Okay, fine. So I closed the computer. We finished the game. We went our separate ways. I got up early this morning. And I said, yeah, she's right. So we changed around a little bit this morning, walking the dog, kind of with some different thoughts. And I really thought more about this group. Um, class of 23, although I wasn't able to finish all four years as your principal, I am extremely grateful to be here with all of you today. I am extremely impressed by your resilience and more impressed by the level of kindness you have carried through some difficult times and you stayed, as you stayed together. During the last few weeks, I had the pleasure of filling in for the principal at the Bucher School. Not necessarily my forte at elementary level, but I'm grateful for a lot of assistance from the staff. This is where I was reminded of some of the simplest advice I can give you today. Be the first. Not like Chloe said. After I left my stint at the Bucher, I received a wonderful set of thank you notes with some interesting drawings of me from the littlest learners in the building, our kindergarten students. I have a couple I'll read. Dear Mr. Tracy, you are so helpful on the playground. You make me so happy when you are smiling. Dear Mr. Tracy, I love how you are always smiling. You are very kind. The theme of the notes is what's important to me. Many of them said, I like when you smiled. Fairly simple, but therein lies the lesson. Be the first to smile. It may be the first shining light in someone's day. Be the first to say hello. You never know what doors may be opened. Be the first to say thank you because unfortunately too many people fail to do it. Be the first to volunteer. Who knows, you may just spark others to jump in. Be the first to invite someone into your group. It may be the brightest day, the brightest part of the person's day. Be the first to give a compliment. Build people up rather than break them down. Be the first to dance. You may be the person everyone else needed to join in. Plus, you got to have a little fun once in a while. 
Be the first to say good morning. You can be the positive spark someone needed to start their day. And most importantly, be the first to be there when you're truly needed. A friend or friendly face may someday save a life. I hope this tiny bit of advice will be helpful as you leave Hamilton Wenham and move on to your future. The reality is what you think your future looks like now will be more than likely be very different in 10 or 15 years. As the great Tina Turner said, the real power behind whatever success I have now is something I found within myself, something that's in all of us. Find it within yourself and be the first. I am very proud of all of you and wish you the best as you begin the next segment of your journey. And remember, we will always be here for you because general relationships last a lifetime. Thank you. Now, for the reason we're all here. Mr. Menagoni, it looks like it's time to certify our graduates. By the authority vested in me, by the state of Massachusetts, and the Hamilton Wenham Regional School Committee, I certify that the members of the Hamilton Wenham Regional High School Class of 2023 assembled before us today have met all the requirements of the state of Massachusetts and the Hamilton Wenham Regional School District and are eligible to receive a diploma this morning. Max Robert Almeida. Sydney Ellen Amaro. Eliza Carlin Bassam. Sophie Carlin Bassam. Robert Milton Baum. Alexandra Sophia Benchoff. Chloe Ann Honduras. John Francis Bile. Jessica Diane Bouchard. Ende Fatou Luisa Brady Juke. William Glover Brown, the sixth. Jane Margaret Burnham. Yeah. Hannah Lynn Butler. Yeah. Natalie Christine Pasivio. Yeah. Leon Aurelio Calvo. Riley Elizabeth Campbell. Tegan Grace Carcioni.
Russell Thomas Caswell III. Alexandra Emma Chan. Eloise Jean Shimitaro. Me, me, Madeline Clark. Delia May Collins. Maxwell Joseph Consolazio. Jackson Hunter Contois. Carly Elizabeth Cronin. Alexander Walter Cullen. Brendan Paul Dalton. Bailey James Davis. Christian Joseph Davis. James David Day. Ryan Quinn Dennison. Elena Elizabeth Dent. Emma Catherine Dixon. John Robert Urtel. Ava Montgomery Kim Finn. Kate Weber Fitzgibbons. Marley Caitlin Flanagan. Mia Mary Flurry. Andrew Michael Genualdo. William Elijah Gern. Sam Russell Gingrich. Hannah Cook Glass. Lily Noel Glass. Morgan Charles Slovsky. Nina Shah Gorley. Maya Tian Shan Granice. Emma Paige Happel. Theodore Paul Hargrove. Liam Robert Heaney. Lucas Patrick Hunt. Wells Parker Johnson.
Andrew Nathaniel Jones. Nathaniel Doherty Jones. Gloria C. Jung. Catherine Swart Campman. Mariana Grace Kalbach. Angela Choi Kim. Charles Driscoll Kinch. Andrea Hanyu Kohler. Amanda Grace Lannon. Danielle Hadassah Leger. Caleb Joel Leonard. Rowan Russell Leonard. Christopher John Mayo. <laughs> Katarina Alexeevna Makaganov. <laughs> Sydney Elizabeth Mason. Georgia, Amelia Mazuzan. Connor, Brian McClintock. Olivia, Madison McLaughlin. Caitlin, Jameson, Manigoni. Messina. Christopher Brown Mitchell. Christina Lynn Montoya. Sophia Maria Montoya. Eli Nathan Mosher. Aaron Bowen O'Bannon. Luke Beck O'Connor. Ariana Brooke Anokin. Sophie Morgan Packard. Kira Margaret Peavy. Christopher Stephen Pierce. Lillian May Prier. Philip 
Edward Prier. Karina Elizabeth Reeves. Samuel Jude Reed. Samuel Michael Richardson. Thomas Alfred Ring. Grace Colleen Rubach. Sophia Renee Roman Roman <laughs> Ricardo David Romano Pumarino Brady Stephen Rose Lily Hope Russo Amber May Scanlon. Ella Bess Schenker. Timothy Philip Seward. Nev Marie Shekels. <laughs> Abigail Lancaster Simon. <laughs> Paige Eleanor Skellett. <laughs> Olivia Hattie Sulman. Hannah Ruth Sebene. Harrison Joseph Stein. Andrew Joseph Stewart. Aeneas Finn Strozier. Isabel Judith Tanch. <laughs> Phoebe Rose Ting. <laughs> Ryan Preston Travers. <laughs> Allie Caroline Tripp <laughs> Lucas Christopher Toomey Dylan Norcross Whitman. <laughs> Sophie Elizabeth Wilbur. <laughs> Laney May Wilkins. <laughs> Tucker Jeffrey Wilson. Benjamin Patrick Wood. <laughs> Sophia Lynn Zarilli. <laughs> Jeff 
Zhao Jinghao. Maya Vian Beach. Chloe Ann Gorn. I would li now like to welcome the class of 2023 President Eliza Bassam. Thank you. I would like to end off today by saying thank you to all those who have helped us through these past four years teachers, counselors, custodians, and all others who played a role in our awesome school. Also, thank you to everyone's guardians who have supported the wonderful people you see before us today. Without all of you, none of us would be here. Thank you for the time you spent driving us to practices, proofreading our essays, and of course, helping us study. And a special thank you to Mr. Walsh and Ms. Cooney for four years of dedicated work to give our class the best opportunities and senior events I've ever seen. Now to finish up the ceremony, thank you to the class of 2023 for the past four years. I'm beyond grateful for the opportunity to be in this position and for the many memories we created along the way. I wish you all the best with your future endeavors, and I'll be the first to tell you congratulations after getting your diplomas, and please join me in moving our tassels from the right to the left.